Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are talking about an inter-query parallelism. We will know what is an inter-query parallelism. And finally, we will go within shared nothing and shared disk protocol to follow this inter-query parallelism. <music> There are several database management systems which allows that the queries or the transactions that can be performed hand in hand with each other. That means one query and one transaction or the two queries or two transactions are performed simultaneously. Now this type of parallelism is the simplest type of parallelism that can offered by a database management system and it actually increases the efficiency on that particular CPU and also the I/O overhead because this inter-query paralleling nature. That means both this query can now parallelly run with each other when they are having executed by a single transactions or say by a separated transaction. Now the inter-query parallelism becomes extremely efficient when it has in multiple processor systems that is supported by it. That means now my queries from different processors that if one query from one processor if it is running in a distributed system and another query from another processor connected within global autonomy then they can connect with each other very smoothly if they are on an inter-query parallelism. So now if a database management system support this inter-query parallelism, then they can have the facility to provide both the queries lies in different distributed system or different sites or nodes, and they can run now a particular problem on which the query can be fetched from the database. Now this type of parallelism is the simplest way of parallelism that can be performed by any DBMS because this inter-query just increases this cache coherency. Now what we mean by this inter-query parallelism that is limited with the number of database or the tuples that is separated onto the disk. So first we need to consider the IO parallelism. After the disk has been partitioned into sectors and the sectors now can have each tuples based on either the round robin, the range partitioning or the hash partitioning. Now say one query is from the hash partitioning area, one is from the range partitioning area. Now we can combine these queries in a nested query or in a complex query where one query's part on the where part is having the another query. So it is a complex query and both query can internally parallel and run with each other without any interference of this item. Because when there is a complex query, we can say that each of the query will be of a different item. Otherwise, we wouldn't have combined it with a where clause and the joining. So the joining relations also matters for this inter-query parallelism. The joining relations such as the complex join, the natural join, the equi join, all can be performed good when there is a facility called inter-query parallelism is maintained in this DBMS. Now the individual response time of this transactions or query is not increased as it will be same as the query if it is run in alone or in isolation. But together, the concurrent computing time will be lesser in this inter-query parallelism. Now what happens when we try to store this type of queries inside a shared nothing disk and in a disk shared? So when we try to store in a shared nothing disk, that means we are not sharing the memory, but they are concurrently accessing the database. That means they have their own copy of the database and each are having updated that particular copy. This becomes extremely problematic for designing of the database designer because now they need to keep update of every copy that is coherent with each other. Uh, if the transaction that belongs to the same part of the database where this inter-query is happening, then it is easier for the database designer to manage this situation. 
Now, as we maintain the term that the cache coherency, which is related to this inter-query parallelism, that means when one query say for fetching a particular database item and there is another query which needs to update or write to that database item. So what happens that if they want to try both of this query at the same time as they are in a parallel in nature, the same item. So the inter-query parallelism restrict themselves to the situation that they can access a different data item by the same time, but not the same data item. Now the query result that has been fetched by one query and can be used by another query by putting that query in a cache query. Now the cache coherency becomes extremely important in this inter-query parallelism. See for this two query which runs hand in hand, one is a complex one, another is a simple one. And the simple one's query will be the result of this complex one's query. What happens that we are having this cache query just has a result or stored the result on the output of this simplex one. Now the cache which is being fed to this output on this input of the complex query there is a problem that update we made to this original database. Now the complex query is required, the cache also the original database. And now there is a problem or discrepancy in the data that is not matched with each other. So this type of problem we should avoid by the concept of cache coherency that the cached data and also the original database would be coherent with each other. That means the high coherency level should be achieved by this inter-query parallelism. Now various protocols are available to provide this cache coherency inside this inter-query parallelism. Now one such protocol will be defined today. At first, the protocol has two steps. The first one is we must read or write the query depending on the demand of the query, we need to acquire a shared or exclusive lock on this query. Now when we are acquiring a read mode, that means we have to make a shared lock on that item and if we are writing or updating that data item, then we need to put an exclusive mode lock on that data item. Now what happens after putting this locks on a particular data item, now say these two queries are run hand in hand with each other. And the transaction then which it belongs to also running with other transaction in parallels. Now the second transaction that is running and the first transaction's one query is having a conflict with the second transaction's query but not the conflict with the same query that it belongs to the transaction. Say for the transaction T1 is having query Q1 and Q2 and another transaction T2 is having query Q3. All these three queries and two transactions are running in parallel and queries Q1 and Q3 are in conflict with each other in that way that Q1 has acquired an exclusive mode lock and now Q3 is wanting a shared mode lock on that particular item. That means Q3 wants to read the data item or display the query, say select star from instructor and Q1 is having a particular item which wants to update like update instructor set salary equals to salary plus 500. So this two cannot go hand in hand because we have already acquired an exclusive mode lock on this Q1 and if Q3 wants an shared mode lock then it needs to wait until and unless the Q1 has been releasing the particular lock. Now what happens if it is acquired and shared mode lock while having this exclusive mode lock, then the value on this optation, that means it will result in an inconsistent data. Say suppose the first two tuples has been updated and now the Q3 has requested for the read of this data. So for now, it will be given us the first two tuples, the updated data and the next tuples as an inconsistent data because it has not been updated by this Q1. So avoid this problem, the protocol is maintaining that once the read or write operation, we need to acquire an appropriate mode lock. And the second part is even more interesting that the second part says us before releasing the lock, every cache that the query is having should be flushed to the disk and after that it can release the lock. So even if the query has processed the result given the output, Q3 
cannot release the lock until and unless the cache has been flushed to the disk. That means first the cache need to be updated or output to the disk where it is storing or to which partition of the disk it is storing. And now it can release the lock on that particular item or a tuple. Now by this protocol what we can do that we can acquire and shared and exclusive mode lock and whenever the process is requesting to get a page it will be corrected with an correct page from this buffer pool. Now if say that sub protocols which is following the previous one can be released with the repeatable read and write that we can provide with this protocol. Now we can move from shared nothing disk to shared to the disk extent by giving a home processor. Now when it avoids this much repeatable reads, what it is doing that it is first having an exclusive mode lock and after the data has been flushed to the disk and the exclusive mode lock is released, now it cannot write to the data. So it can say that once a query has been an exclusive mode lock to a particular data item, then no other can query write the data until and unless it has been read to somebody. That means it doesn't become a dirty write for a particular query, whether it belongs to a single transaction or to different transactions. Now what we can do, we can acquire again and shared an exclusive mode lock and now we can find from the buffer pool where it was stored the previous pages that was being written. After an shared mode lock has been made to it, now we can see that the data has been read which has been modified or updated by the Q1 and now again we can produce an exclusive mode lock to it. Now this shared nothing to shared disk architecture can be moved through the concept of home processor. Say there is a processor PI to every disk DI. Now whenever the processor made any request to this DI on this PI, then it is granted on this process, betterly evacuated with this strong and this explicit mode lock with this shared and exclusive mode lock that is provided with it. But if there is some other process, say for P0 to PN, except for PI, request for that particular data item belongs to DI, then it must send the request to PI. It is the home processor of that particular disk and it will decide that whether to grant the lock to that particular processor, say PN, which is requesting for the lock on that data item. So in this way that do not share anything becomes shared something that will be decided by the home processor. So if the home processor decides to share with that process PN, then the data will be shared with it. Otherwise, it will behave like a normal shared nothing architecture. So in this way, we can achieve this inter-query parallelism to provide and extend the value of the computation time and it cannot improve this response time too. So that is all for this inter-query parallelism. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.